For a Google fan like myself, Google I.O. is the most exciting time of the year. However, I do understand that not everybody gets to come here to Mountain View to experience what Google I.O. is all about. So what I want to do with this video is I want to show you all the cool things that I got to see here this year. And I'm going to start with the coolest thing, Android XR. Now, these are a prototype. They're not an actual retail device, but they do give you an idea of what Google hopes to achieve with AR glasses running on the Android XR platform. I got to try these out and I got to say, they were really cool. I was expecting to be underwhelmed, but they actually were pretty astounding. What I got to see was notifications coming in through the phone that's connected to the glasses. The glasses do not do anything on their own. You have to be connected to the phone. I got to see turn-by-turn -turn navigation, and I also got to see Gemini in action as I looked at things in the real world. For example, I looked at a painting, and I asked who painted it, what kind of painting it was, and Gemini would answer both in text form on the display and in my ears with the sound blasted from the glasses stems directly into my ears. So you don't need to wear earbuds or anything to hear what she's saying. All in all, this is a really promising demo that really worked exactly how I expected it to work. The only semi-disappointing thing was that everything happens in one lens instead of both lenses at the same time. Google told me that this is not a limitation, this is actually by design. So there are certain types of glasses that will have two lenses and there'll be certain ones that have one. And there'll even be wearables that don't have any visuals whatsoever, just audio. So. This was just the way that these prototypes were designed. But I am really excited to see what they can do with two visual displays happening at the same time. The next thing I got to see was something that's not brand new per se, but it's something that was brand new to me, which was actually being able to try Samsung's Project Muhan headset. This also runs on Android XR, but instead of being an AR device, it's a VR device or an XR device, considering that you can still see what's going on in the real world. However, you would look pretty silly walking down the street with Project Muhan on your face, and you probably wouldn't look that silly walking around with the AR prototypes that we saw earlier. My first impression of the Project Muhan headset is that this is exactly what I've wanted from a VR device. It was super comfortable to wear, it was fully featured, it had touch gestures so you didn't need to use a controller, but Google tells me that you can use a variety of controllers, including Xbox controllers and even VR controllers that you would Bluetooth to the headset. So this is a fully functioning thing, unlike maybe the Apple Vision Pro, which seemed very limited in scope with what it could do. But Project Muhan seems like it's going to be something that all VR people will be really into. The question, of course, is when is it going to come out? What is it really going to be called? And how much is it going to cost? These are things that Google could not tell me. But trying out Project Muhan for the first time was really exciting for me, and it only made me more excited for learning all the things about it that are coming soon later this year. Another cool thing that I got to try out here at I.O. is AI mode. Now, this is something that you can try out on your own already. All you got to do is go to Google and sign up for labs within search, and then you can give this a shot. So what it does is it allows you to make very complex Google searches and have it do multiple searches to answer your query. So instead of saying, I'm trying to go on vacation, where should I go? And then doing a different Google search saying, okay, I figured out where I want to go. Now, how can I afford to go? You can just give a long prompt describing exactly what you want to do, how much you want to pay, etc., And it'll do multiple searches and compile everything together in one page that makes it look really easy to understand. So I did this by looking for a smartphone. I looked for one that was under $800. It had to be running Android, had to be available in the United States and have a great camera. This is a search that probably would have taken me a long time to do, but with AI mode in Google search, it did everything for me, which made it incredibly simple. On top of AI mode, we also have a new feature called Search Live. So this is very similar to what you can do currently in Android using the Gemini app, where you can show Gemini what's going on in the real world through your camera and talk with Gemini about it. However, this is now coming to Google search itself within AI mode, which means that you will no longer need to have an Android phone to use it. 
everyone across the world to be able to have it at some point later this summer. And I got to try it out and it works pretty much like it does on Android within the Gemini app, so nothing too exciting there. But still, it does work. You can show it what's going on in the real world, ask it questions, and it'll answer it. So this is something you should definitely get excited about, especially if you do not currently have an Android phone or access to the Gemini app. One of the coolest things that I got to see here at I.O. was actually also one of the more terrifying things, which is Flow. Flow is based on Vio, which is Google's image creation platform that actually creates moving images. So imagine is what you would do to create something that would be a still image, but Vio creates eight second long moving pictures. Now with Vio 3 underneath Flow, you'll be able to create both video clips and audio clips that sync up with that video, allowing you to create something that actually has dialogue in it, which we've never seen before. Unfortunately, I didn't get to try out VO3 here at I.O. because it would take too long. Adding your prompts to VO3 apparently takes up to 10 minutes for it to actually figure out what your prompt is and create that clip. So I didn't have enough time at the demo to actually do it. But I did get to try out the Flow interface with VO2 and it worked really, really well. I typed in a prompt about a bug droid and a cat having a date, and I got exactly what I asked for. You can edit that video clip on the timeline. You can even extend the clip if you want it to go a little bit farther. This was really cool, and it made me think to myself that maybe movie makers are gonna be out of a job in the next couple of years. But luckily, when I tried to make a second clip, it completely ignored the first clip and made the bug droid look like some weird 50s android thing. So, this is a long way away from being able to replace an actual movie maker, which makes me feel a little bit more comfortable about it. All the things I've told you about so far are things you will actually be able to try with your phones or computers sometime in the future. But the next one is something that you probably will not be able to try, which is a robot. Using the power of Gemini, you can communicate directly with these two robotic hands and ask them to do things for you, like move objects around or reorganize things. It was as easy as speaking into a microphone, giving a command, and then watching as they would execute those commands for me. Now, these are not pre-programmed to do these things. What they'll do is they'll look at the objects, identify them using Gemini's algorithms, and then understand what my command is. This is something that we could never have done five, 10 years ago. But now anyone could just walk up to a robot, make a request, and watch as the robot executes it for them. I did hit a few snags, it didn't understand a few of my commands, and it would continue to execute commands even after it had finished them. So this wasn't perfect, but it was still really cool to, well, talk to a robot. So those are all the exciting things that I saw here at Google I.O. in Mountain View. And as exciting as this all is, I'm really excited for what's gonna come next year because AI is only gonna get more advanced and we're only gonna see more and more cool things from Google in this realm. So before I go, jump down in the comments and let me know which one of these things you thought was the most exciting. And in the meantime, I will see you in the next video.